<laughs> Directly after the prayers, we all march, uh, chanting, and invariably, or all the time, it is met by violence. As soon as it, sometimes the peaceful protest doesn't even get there. And, uh, but they, they, they usually open up with tear gas. You know, sometimes, if we're lucky, they'll address us with a loud tailor. There's a closed military area, as they call it. And we five, give us five minutes to disperse, or, you know, we may endure violence. And, and uh, then they open up with the tear gas and, uh, you know, f fired from the rifles or handheld. And sometimes live fire, sometimes pine 22 bullets and the rockets in or whatever. Then they have uh, like chemical mace or they call it skunk, like it's, it smells like sewage. You, you vomit, you know, once it gets to your clothes, you've got to throw your clothes away. And uh, sometimes they come out and, and, and uh, with batons and just beating people. They will, they will go into the village and start tiring uh, tear gas. And as you know, it's a terror. It's, uh, what, what they're doing is terrorizing the, the village. And uh, Berlin, you see, is quite famous now, or a high profile uh, Bishop Tutu, Jimmy Carter, and uh, Richard Branson, or the elders, and Mary Robinson has been there, Maria Corrigan Maguire. And it's, it's number one like kind of resistance or non violent resistance, you see. And with my camera, I cover the Berlin protest. Sometimes I cover Nalin, and then I do Sheikh Jarrah, I go down to Hebron. Well, it's a wall that the Israelis call uh, a security wall. And, you know, and what I call, the Palestinians call uh, uh, an apartheid annexation wall. And it's been uh, found in 2004 by the, Inter the International Court of Justice to be illegal and it ought to be dismantled reparations uh, paid to the Palestinians. Like the Israelis say, a security, but like it, doesn't, it doesn't follow the green internationally recognized armistice line, 48 armistice line, the green line, they call it. It's, uh, it follows a very few kilometers. Then let's say there's some rich agricultural Palestinian land coming up and it dips in and whips it out, expropriates it into Israel. So that's, it's, it's a latent land grab, but the, the Israelis are quite adept at presenting it for security. And the world accepts this barefaced lie, you know, even though the International Court of Justice, any members of international law like Ireland, they cannot aid in the best the, the, the construction of this illegal project. You know, it's, it's criminal what it's doing, you know. Well, my age helps me, you see. I'm, you know, 63 next uh, May, and I don't fit, let's say, their, their uh, ter Palestinian terrorist profile. I'm a look, I masquerade or oppose the tourist, and my luggage will be sanitised, nothing to do with Palestine, and I'm there for cultural and religious reasons. If they knew what I've been doing, they, they would uh, deport me. They wouldn't allow me in, let's say, you know. But they are, they are going home, they are very proactive in shutting down any support. And the more formidable it is, the more it is targeted. And I think that's why in Berlin it's like maverick activists such as myself and ISM, and we'd be the main threat to them. Because we're, 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 we're you know, we're, we're, we're right up there on the front line, you know. <laughs> I mean, I sleep in the international house, my clothes ready in the chair, the key in the lock, and my uh, ready to go, go, be out there in a minute, and we run towards them, begin filming them, and sort of begin, let's say, uh, not harassing them as such, but why are you here? And, and they don't like this. I say, shame on you, man, you shouldn't be doing this. Shame on you. Some of them point the guns at us, depending upon the... Israeli soldier, but we, we let's say I, I would, and the other internationals there would provide an insulating blanket. Like once they see us, and that's why we're targets actually, that's why they, want, they don't want uh, people recording their crimes or their, their terrorization of the village. And that's why we're a threat to them as such, a threat to their war crimes, not a direct threat uh, of physical. We don't uh, attack them or, or, you know, sometimes we would retrieve, physically retrieve the man that's been arrested, but we never, uh, uh, you know, they're heavily tooled up like in the shooter dead, just, just like that, you know. You hear me? You hear me? You want answers? Leave there. You want answers? You want answers? 
Yeah, you tell us about it, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'll tell you. You have to be ultra careful. And then when you were doing there, and I was there for three months, you gradually get the lie of the land or scout the mentality of these people. And I deliberately keep quiet. They tell you to move aside a wood. And then I got my own voice, let's say, towards the end, you know? I says, you know, bugger these people. I am here for a, for a, for a you know, why should I keep my mouth shut? And it, like, it just came out of me assertiveness spontaneously without thinking of it. Because if you think about it, you'll freeze inside. Because, you know, with good reason, they, they'll shoot you or they'll damage you, arrest you. Deport you, so I, I would challenge them like quite, uh, you know, robustly. Like. No, you go over there, please. I'm asking nicely. Thank you. You can follow me as uh, as ever you want. Why are you here, man? Hi. You want to engage in some nice explanation of why you're here? I'm just doing my job, man. Ah, well, that's that's what the Nazi said, man, in Auschwitz. You know, that's the notorious phrase. Wrong, wrong, wrong phrase, man. Just doing your job. But I mean, don't you mind to yourself a conscience? You know? But we have you, you shouldn't be here, you know? All right. I'm part of the family now. And I'm well embedded in Berlin and you know, they know I'm I'm you know, I'm strong there for Berlin like or whatever, and all the people would have a good time for me, you know, say hello to me. The children gather around me and you know, give them the old shekel like and I just love her there now. You know? oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's very good. Happy beer. Happy beer. De. De. To you. To you. Martin. Martin. Martin, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's very good, Martin. It's piss poor like, and all the roads are potholed. But you don't notice that after a few, after a week. You know, the people, the, the, the camaraderie or the, or, the, or, the, or the friendliness there is overwhelming, you know. It, it's, uh, people are... Very much like Ireland, when I was a child, remembering neighbours coming around and the crack would last for hours and the conversation and the pipe smoking. And Berlin is very much like that now. You know, it's a powerful place to be in, you know. It's very humane, Berlin is, you know. It's like my second home now. And, you know, it is my home, you know. And I, I, I'd move over there if, if I... If they, but you're only given a three-month visa, you see. And if the Israelis be able to be on to me now. I don't know how long I'll last, even if I get in through Ben Gurion Airport, but, uh, or maybe last there a week, or you know, or maybe last the three months, but definitely I wouldn't last the life, rest of my life there. They'll, they'll be on to me, get rid of me, you know? Bethlehem, he was a big, strong man, you know, and very agile. He was, uh, you know, he was like a gentle giant. He'd always be, he'd always leave the... Uh, the the uh, the protests every Friday, and he he'd always address. I never seen him once abusing uh, the Israeli soldiers across the way. Once the tear gas would start firing, he'd he'd stop rag or stop like there's peaceful protest here or whatever. Bassem was shouting, "Go back!" And he died his hands up to his head, tearing in exasperation, frustration. He always tried to keep it. And he was a really sweet guy. The Israeli army would have known him. He, he, was, he was saying, Raig, uh, hands up to the Israeli commander, you've shot an injured uh, an Israeli protester. You know, he was shot at point blank range or whatever with malice and malevolence. And, and what it did, it went right into his chest. Now, he was a big, big, strong man, bro you know, and, and uh, it punctured, cracked his ribs and broke, smashed them and, and it punctured his heart. And he died there and then, you know. So, uh, His murder destroyed the village. I mean, they're still traumatised about it, you know. And when I was here in Galway and I heard about it, and, and, I, and I, you know, I, I was, ended up crying for days. And, uh, you know, his, his murder deeply affects me because I knew him, and he was uh, a very sweet man. They shouldn't have done it, and fuck him. That's why I'm, I'm ferociously focused against Israel and the murder machine, you know. So the murder of Bassem, in other words, has made me just iron and hard, iron and hard towards Israel. They're just a murderous criminal state, you know? You know?